In the last lesson, we have briefly introduced the functional API and learned how to use the functional API to construct a simple neural network for predicting image. In this lesson, we will dive into some important features of the functional API. The first useful features of the functional API is that it allows us to use the same graph of layers to define multiple models. Let's go ahead and get started. In the functional APIs, models are created by specifying their inputs and outputs uh, into the model functional API in a graph of layers in the architecture. That means that the single graph of the layers, the architecture, can be used to generate multiple out models. Let's take a look on this example. Let's try to use the same stack of the layers to create two multiple models. The first model is an encoder, and then the second model is an end-to-end -end auto encoder. Here is the first encoder model that, that will take the input 20x by 20x by 1 as an image input, and then it will go through two convolutional layers with um, two value activation functions with uh, 16 units for the first layers, 32 units of neurons for the second layers, and a 3x3 three three kernel. And then everything will be pooled by with these uh, maximum poolings to these layers. And after having these maximum pooling to these, we will have another two sets of two two additional layers and one additional global maximums to the maximum poolings to these layers. And finally, it will return us a 16 dimensional vector. Now, we, now let's use the functional API. The first thing that we would like to define is the input. Now we call it encoder input. The input takes the shapes of 20x by 20x by 1, just like what we mentioned over here. And we, we also assign um, provide a name for this encoder input. That is the image as the image input. And we need to construct two layers, two convolutional layers at the very beginning. The first one is the layer stock convolutional 2Ds with 16 units, 3 by 3 kernels. And the activation function is a value activation function, and that will take the encoder input from the previous cells. And of course, it will return a X for the next layers. And then this X legs as, as the input for these layers will go through a convolutional 2D with 32 units with 3x3 three three kernels and activation function value. And again, it will return you a X as an output. And then this X from the previous input, from the previous input, will go through a maximum pooling to the output with a 3x3 pooling window. And it will then return you a X as the output. And after that, it continues. It will go through two convolutional layers. And these are these two convolutional layers with the 32 units uh, as the neurons and with 32 uh, and 16 units for the neurons. And finally, it will go through a global maximum pooling to these layers. And then it will return you an encoder output. And this output will be a 60 dimensional vector. Now, let's put, and then we once we construct these configures these models, we can then put the input and also put the output in these Keras model, Keras functional API models, and we call it a encoders models. And now let's take a look on the summary. And we have the input image that is 20x by 20x as one by one, and then it will go through two convolutional to these layers and one maximum to these layers. And after that, it will go through against two additional convolutional to these layers and the global maximum pooling layer as the output. And you can see that 
the output is a 16 by 1, uh, 16 dimensional vector. Now we're going to build another model called it auto encoder. To form a auto encoder models, we need a encoder and we also need a decoder. And then we combine these auto uh, and then we combine these encoders and decoders together to form a end-to-end -end auto encoders models. Encoders model has been just created by in, in this previous cell. Um, so now the outputs, we, we just specify the inputs and outputs in a graph of layers over here. So on top of these encoders models, we can build a decoders and to form these end-to-end -end auto encoders models. So we do not need to build everything from scratch. We just on top of, we just build another models on top of these encoders model. We take the outputs from the previous from the previous models, and that is the 16 dimensional vectors. And then we're going to reshape these models as a four by four, uh, four by four inputs. And we will go through a two transpose convolutional um, to these tran convolutional to these layers. And then we are going to up sampling um, 2D. That is a up sampling matrix to to reverse the down sampling with the use of the maximum pooling. Again, we are going to transpose to have two more transpose layers, and then it will return to the output uh, 20x by 20x image output. And that match the size that we have at the very beginnings of this input image. And as a result, it's called it an auto encoder. So everything is here is a like a reverse the process. So the first thing that we're going to do is to reshape with is to have a reshaped layers that is going to reshape these encoder outputs, which is a, a 60 dimensional vector. We're going to reshape it as a four by four by one um, uh, image. And then we're going to provide these outputs these outputs for the next layer and that is the convolutional 2d transpose and another convolutional 2d transpose with their corresponding number of neurons and also corresponding uh, kernel and also the value activation functions and then what we're going to do is to up sampling the outputs from these two previous uh, convolutional transpose layers and after going through this upsampling layer, we will have another transpose of the layers, another two, two transpose of the uh, convolutional layer. This is the first one. Sorry, this is the first one. And this is the final one. And then for these final ones, we call it the decoder output. Again, we can build, we can, we just configure the models. Now we can put everything inside the Keras model with the encoder input. This is the encoder input. And then with the decoder output, this is the decoder's output. And now we call this model as an auto encoder's models. And now let's take a look on this summary. Now you can see that with now specifying the previous models, now you can see that the model has already embedded the graph of layers that we have in the previous models. Here we just specify the encoder output and these are everything coming from these encoder outputs. And it will just take the graph of the, the graph of the layers that we have um, and then put it over into the next into these auto encoders models and just like what we've done we are going to reshape the inputs have two transpose convolutional layers and then upsampling have another two sets of transpose convolutional layers and then we can build these auto encoders on top of these pre pre built encoders model hence the decoder's architecture is strictly 
sym symmetrical to the encoder architecture. And so the output shape is the same of the input shape over here. And of course, a friendly reminder is that the convolutional 2D, uh, reverse versions of this convolutional 2D is a convolutional 2D transfer, and the reverse of a maximum pooling 2D, that is the down sampling to these layers, is an up sampling to these layer. And you can see that with the use of these pre-built encoders, with the use these um, this uh, graph of the layers, we can then build an auto encoders on top of these encoders models to form this auto encoder. And finally, of course, just like what I mentioned, the in because the decoder decoding architecture is strictly symmetric to the encoding architectures, so the output shapes will be same as the input shapes, and that is the auto encoders. That is how we can use the, the the graph of the layers to define multiple model and that's it for this video and for the first features in the next video i will show you another features which is a callable feature see you in the next video bye bye